Good afternoon and a huge welcome to Saab. We are in Linköping in Sweden, the flight capital of Northern Europe actually. And you are now about to see a very special webcast where we will show you for the very first time the next step in the Gripen evolution. Somewhere in here is the Gripen E, the next generation. The very first fighter in the evolution of Gripen. And here in Linköping, our guests, media and customers are now taking their places for uh, a presentation of Gripen, the evolution. I think I've said Gripen evolution three times now, and I guess that is music to his ears. I'm talking about Richard Smith, head of marketing and sales Hello. for Gripen. Hi. Hello, thank you. What is Gripen evolution? Well, first of all, evolution is not just a business buzzword for us in SAP. It really, really means something. Evolution to me is about improvement, getting better and better and better all the time. And it's inherent in Saab's genes and Saab's DNA and has been ever since Saab was formed over 70 years ago. The thing about that is that that culture, that DNA flows down through the Saab product range, particularly at Gripen. And what we see now on the market is a real need for more advanced capabilities, more complex missions to be flown, and particularly the threats. They also adapt to technology. And the modern warfare environment, well, we see highly complex scenarios now. And of course, there's the technology. Technology moves at such a speed that we have to maintain that competitive edge by having the new technologies. So what we'll see today with the Gripen E is an aircraft with more power. It's got a new engine, more fuel. It can go further, more, bigger payload. Again, really important for the modern weapons scenario, weapons system. More advanced sensor suite, and really, really importantly, is an all new, brand new, advanced avionics architecture. I mean, this really is evolution that we'll see here today with Gripen E. Yes, well, hang on, so we'll <coughs> come to that. But let me ask you, why Gripen? Why not some a brand new name? Oh, it's a very good question. I think coming from the market, it's really important to look at the words that people use when they talk about Gripen. They say things like ease of maintenance, low logistics footprint, high quality, high impact, high technology, but they also use words like quality, like trust. And when you have words that, like that that are used when you talk about Gripen, it's important not to change the name, it's important to maintain it. <coughs> and where we come from now, we come from a, a proven platform, the Gripen CD. It's the most advanced fighter today that's actually flying, has the Meteor Beyond Visual Range missile, it has an enhanced radar to cope with that extra range of the meteor, and it has helmet-mounted display, small diameter bombs. It really is a top-notch product, but we need to follow the trends in the market, and we'll move now from the CD to the Gripen E. And when you see the aircraft soon, you'll realize that they look very similar, but it's what's inside that counts. It's that avionics architecture that's going to make a real difference yes. to the Gripen E. So take the chance now, if you're a <coughs> customer thinking about uh, upgrading your fighter fleet, why would you, why do you think they should pick Gripen? I think when you, when you look at the market, it's really important that, that the customers, they, they're buying into something that's a huge investment for them. It's very important for them, for the whole nation. It's a 40, 30 to 40 year partnership that they're actually investing in. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a report study made that interviewed a huge number of CEOs from across the aerospace and defense industry. They saw and they said that the trend in the aerospace industry was towards affordability. We've seen that for years. What we also see though is that the air forces, the armed forces, they still have a huge requirement capability that they need. The problem is the defense budgets are going down and they need to maintain that highly capable edge. With Gripen, you get the balance. You get that fighter which meets all the necessary threat scenarios that a customer needs and yet you get value for money. Mm. So in your heart, why are you, uh, Richard Smith, so impressed by Gripen? I think when you look at Gripen, you have to start with Saab as a company in Sweden. This is a country with approximately nine and a half million people, very self-sufficient, enormous uh, industry here that's really high tech, and Saab is really leading that. We have around 14,000 employees. We put around 20% of our sales revenue back into research and development. I mean, we are very focused 
on keeping our products at the edge of technology. And then when you look at the Gryphon, I think, I think it's really important to look at how balanced the design is. But I have two really good examples because we hear a lot on the market today about stealth. The problem with stealth is that it costs so much money. So what do our engineers find? They find what we call e-stealth, electronic stealth. It's where we have, with the Gryphon E, the most advanced electronic warfare suite available. We can go in to a high threat scenario and exit without being seen. That's one. The second, of course, is the, is the avionics architecture. And unfortunately, you can't see that today because it's inside the Gryphon E. But we've come a long way from in the 50s and 60s and now we have a modular integrated avionics. That basically means we can actually put apps onto the aircraft, costs a lot less money, a lot more efficient, and really means that we can actually maintain that competitive edge. Mm. Yeah, very interesting. And you mentioned Sweden and you mentioned Saab. So let us show you a little bit what Saab, what kind of company Saab is. <laughs> The Gripen led us uh, from the 20th century to the 21st century and uh, this aircraft gave us possibility to leave the Soviet military technique behind. The Gripen is the best fighter for us. The Gripen is not just the fighter, that is the weapon system. And uh, our task is to deliver the weapon. So I, I call this uh, smart weapon system, not just a smart fighter. Last year, uh, we had the opportunity to protect uh, the Baltic countries. And uh, during the mission, the Gripen system worked very well. Uh, we were really successful, and that was really important for us. The key advantage, I think, is the information superiority. Or in other words, I think it's the data link systems. She has everything I need to do my mission. She is even smarter because she knows when and how to give those information to me. I know what's going on around me in every dimension, both in the air or on the surface. I know them in real time. Every mission fly with the Gripen is a good mission, and we know that it's going to be an accomplished one. In every time I flew the Gripen, I know that it's not like in the past that we just go alone as a platform and do the missions. We just go there, we know that we have all support from us all other systems. We have uh, pictures from the airborne radar, ground radar. And even better, now we have a sensor from the Royal Thai Navy ship. So this is the technology that we are looking for. And this technology is not just help us to accomplish the mission, but it also help us fulfill the Royal Thai Air Force vision or become one of the best air forces in ASEAN. I have learned how to fly before I flew the Gripens, but the Gripens have teach me how easy it is to fly and win the battle. For me, learning to fly the Gripen was relatively easy because the Gripen is designed to be a single pilot operation kind of aircraft. So the checks, the procedures are very well easily set up and very simple for the pilot to be able to operate the aircraft without worrying so much about those minor things. From my perspective, the key advantage of the Gripen is how it can move from one role to the other. It has a swing role capability. We can have it as an air-to-air -air aircraft and then with a quick store change, it can be to an air-to-ground air aircraft. I would call the Gripen a smart fighter based on its computing power. It is able to make sure that all the systems are constantly running and the systems are good, constantly monitoring its systems. So the pilot worries less about the systems, worries little about what's uh, happening around him and focuses solely on the mission. It helps us to have aircraft that are ready to fly on time, but we don't need to wait for a long time to get the aircraft back from the servicing. The grip and it makes for the job for the technician easier. If the aircraft come and we need to do some configuration change, it's quicker compared to the other aircraft that you can take around about three hours. On this one, you can take around about 45 minutes. Then the aircraft is back online. But on the grip and because it's a smart aircraft, you fix it, it's a short time. So it makes us look smart as technicians. As necessidades operacionais que nós estabelecemos para o Gripen foi, primeiro aspecto, o alcance, pelas dimensões do Brasil, precisava ter um alcance expressivo. 
Segundo aspecto que nós tínhamos também, para justamente coerente com esse alcance, é a parte de reabastecimento em voo. Ele atende isso perfeitamente. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm really happy to be part of this process. I'm really proud to be one of the chosen pilots to be in Sweden learning by the Gripen. I think the Gripen was totally uh, built to help the pilots in the fighter uh, environment. Even Ladies and gentlemen, five minutes left. Please take your seats. Please also make sure to move close together so that you sit. And I'm really proud to be part of Grimpet. Uh, GRIP is important for Brazil because uh, it will be the backbone of the Brazilian air defense system and because the program, the gripping program, will allow Brazilian companies to have uh, contact with the high-end technology and it is very important for the future steps of the Brazilian aeronautical industry. This partnership between Saab and Embraer is not only a partnership between two companies, it's a partnership between two countries. We have already almost uh, 60 families in Sweden. They are uh, delighted about the, the support that they are receiving from the, the Saab colleagues. Very, let me say, good beginning for this partnership. It's a long-term partnership. For our career itself, what we have experienced with with Saab in this program. This changed completely the potential of, of the company in our country. It put us in another level of competitivity in the global market. Brazil as a country has a very few opportunities to develop such a product together with such an industry in the world. So it's very important for us to have the, this opportunity to improve ourselves and the country. The main advantage, uh, except of uh, performance, is uh, man-machine interface. What is really smart uh, in the group and is the integration of uh, all information what you receive uh, from your emitters and uh, from your sensors back. It is, uh, let's say, the best uh, working environment uh, from pilot perspective. Overall, we are very, very satisfied with the aircraft and also with the technicians because it's easy to repair, easy to fly. It's not so costly and uh, for the Czech Republic or the same kind of the country I think that is very very good platform for the flying and for fulfill any, any, any missions. In the future uh, we will use uh, Gripen not only for air-to-air -air missions but also air-to-ground missions which allow us to send uh, Gripens uh, for the international operations. I would say that supersonics, uh, it's a kind of uh, expression of a self-confidence or a kind of strength. Sweden is such a serious and uh, reliable partner. The product is a high quality product. We have a new contract and uh, we'll use uh, YAS 39 Gripen for the next at least 12 years. And uh, we are fully satisfied with YAS Gripen. For me, the Gripen comes as a kit, not as an aircraft by itself. It's a complete kit with support, logistics, training, workshops, evaluation and so on. And that's smart. That's really useful for me as an air commander. From a Swedish Air Force perspective, it's really important to do it step by step, small steps rather than giant leaps. I think it gives us the possibility to influence what will be developed and also it makes it possible to get the latest technology into the system as soon as possible. MS-20 will give the Swedish Air Force improved operational capacities. We are introducing Meteor and other technical adjustments that will give us improved capacities, helmet mountain display and so on. I feel really confident with the Gripens guarding the Swedish sky. a day like this, I must ask you. I, I personally, I feel very proud. I mean, I, it's easy for me to stand here and talk, but so many people have been involved in this program. This is such an amazing moment that we're going to see today as we roll out the, the Gripen E-Test aircraft. It feels fantastic, and there's so much energy here. It's great. Yes, and it's about to start right now. So thank you very okay. much for now. We'll be back uh, after the show. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for being with us right now. And uh, enjoy the show, everybody.
We are proud to present the next step in the evolution. Gripen E. The most capable and cost efficient fighter in the world. A modern fighter with a revolutionary avionic system, a more powerful engine with improved range, and the ability to carry greater payloads than ever before. With new radar, electronic warfare and communication systems, your Air Force can dominate the air domain. A new balanced design, equipped with all you can ask for from a multi-role fighter. Easy to service and maintain, with maximum airtime and minimum ground time. More capable of defending your independence than ever before. Gripen E, the smart fighter, just got smarter. Please welcome on stage our head of aeronautics, Ulf Nielsen. Thank you. In this business, we're used to hearing a lot of words being thrown around, and big claims being made for small steps, or even when no progress has been made at all. This is not the Swedish way. We usually do the opposite. We achieve something remarkable, but we don't like to talk about it. So let's be clear about what Saab is unveiling here today. We are redefining air power for the 21st century. We are changing the way air forces will think, fly and fight for decades to come. We are putting an entirely new level of capability into the hands of the operators, an entirely new capability to dictate and dominate the air domain and joint missions with armies and navies for centuries to come. We're doing it the Saab way and continuously change, continuously break the cost curve. And that means increased operational performance at an, at an affordable price in a record short lead time. This is the only fighter program on time and on budget. This is how you redefine air power for the 21st century. It's real, it's ready, it's the future. We have taken everything Saab and our partners knows for 75 years. Everything Sweden knows from living in a strategic part of the world. And having one of the most advanced opponents has driven us to put all that knowledge into a fighter that will deliver total combat effectiveness. We know there is no second place. Gripen's balanced design with our mix of advanced technology and smart thinking makes Gripen unique. Gripen makes air forces more powerful, more flexible and more useful in every way. In an uncertain world where operational requirements are changing all the time, we have an answer you can rely on. The real cost of a fighter is not something you can measure easily. It's about the cost of operation, sustaining and keeping fighters effective for 30 to 40 years or more. This is how we redefine air power for the 21st century. Because air force that can't deploy and support and sustain a useful number of aircraft is no force at all. Gripper delivers air power at every level and makes pilots a superior force. It gives nations security, sovereignty and assurance. It also provides a true roadmap for technology development and partnership. No other fighter out there
can say this and deliver. So when I say we redefine air power for the 21st century, perhaps I'm being a bit unswedish, but today I'm extremely proud what we have achieved. So welcome to the grip unveiling of Gripen. Thank you. Please welcome our moderator, Sabina von Gafke. Defense ministers, excellencies, chief of air forces, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this historical day and one of the most important events in aviation history of the year. A warm welcome also to those of you who joined us in the earlier session and also an additional warm welcome to our worldwide web viewers who are viewing this live webcast all the world around. Once again, my name is Sabine von Gafke. I have the honor and pleasure of moderating this event. We have an exciting and inspirational afternoon ahead of us with a great lineup of speakers. And last but not least, the thrilling and historical unveiling of Gripen E. This afternoon session will, of course, have full focus on the next generation of smart fighters with the launch of the latest smart fighter that we're talking about, Gripen E, one of the most advanced multi-role fighters in the world. Revolutionary because it combines advanced technology, operational effectiveness in an affordable package, like no other aircraft can ever hope to match. And with that, I'd like to invite our next speaker on stage, a man who has extensive knowledge about international operations, the Swedish Air Force, and why there is a need for next generation Gripen. Major General Mats Helgeson, the Swedish Air Force Chief of Staff, will guide us through the upgrade from, uh, the upgrade from Gripen CD to Gripen E and enlighten us on why an upgrade of the Smart Fighter is necessary. So please give a warm welcome to Major Mats Helgeson. Thank you. Thank you for that warm welcome. Uh, ministers, ambassadors, director generals, generals, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm most pleased to be here today. Today is a day for a celebration. And it's not every air chief who has the possibility to be a part of a rollout like this. So I'm, for me, this is a really special day. In the beginning, it was not only the Charlie version, it was actually the Alpha. And when I started to fly the Gripen, it was the Alpha version. But when the Swedish Armed Forces and the Air Force turned into focus on being a part of international operations, there was a great need for a new edition of the Gripen. So 14 years ago, the Charlie Delta version of the Gripen was delivered to FMV from Saab. Gripen Charlie Delta is today the backbone of the Swedish air defense. The aircraft is a great high-tech evolution, equipped with the MS-20 software edition with all those weaponry and sensors that we've seen previous today. It's a platform with lots of capabilities, dressed for missions within national defense or as well taking part of international operations. With the Gripen more interoperable, it has also attracted other air forces as well. And today, it's quite obvious when you look into the crowd here that there, we are a strong and good Gripen user team today. I can see representatives from the Czech Republic, Hungary, South Africa, Thailand, and not to forget Brazil going for the Echo version. When Sweden sent fighters, Gripen fighters, for an international mission in 2011 to be a part of the Operation Unified Protector over Libya. It was the first time since 1961 for us to send fighters on a mission abroad. And I'm really proud of what the Swedish Air Force accomplished in that operation. To me, to me it was clear evidence that we were really well trained, we were well equipped, and we have had many years for preparations. 
The Grip and Charlie Delta was operationally proven for the first time and under international operations. But before and during that the same time, back in our headquarters in Stockholm, we were investigating in how to develop the Gripen for the future. It was sometimes quite challenging to explain to people outside the Air Force the need for a new fighter when we just have performed very well in the operations over Libya. Was not the Charlie Delta version of the Gripen good enough for the Swedish Air Force and the Swedish Armed Forces? My answer to that was Gripen Charlie Delta is indeed relevant today, but if we would like to remain relevant for the future, future 30 plus years in joint and combined fights, we need to investigate further on the requirements for future fighters. We have therefore really tried to understand the challenges coming with the development in the future operational environment in our neighborhood and what in implication there will be for us preparing for the future fight. The work has been done through joint wargaming, simulation, tabletop exercises, but we have tried and done our very best to explain and convince to all decision makers the impact of using air power and maybe even more important what the consequences will be if there is absence of air power in the different scenarios. This has been a conscious, deliberate and very important effort from our side. And I would argue today with this rollout of the Gripen Echo it has paid off. This is truly an important milestone for the Swedish Air Force. Our Supreme Commander at that time stated in February 2012, the Swedish Armed Forces need at least 60 to 80 Gripen Echoes for the future. And this was followed by a political decision to go ahead with acquiring 60 Gripen Echoes. So why have we chosen the Gripen Echo configuration? because we can foresee changes in our operational environment in the future. There will be upgraded and new fighters in our neighborhood, and there will be upgraded and new ground-based air defenses in our neighborhood, and there will be upgraded and new naval assets in our neighborhood. When we analyze the impact of these upgraded systems and these <clears throat> operational capabilities in our neighborhood in the future. We estimated that we will need capabilities to, to operate in a future contested environment, and we will need increased range and endurance. We will need improved communication capabilities, better radars, better electronic warfare systems, improved sense of fusion with coverage and redundancy on a high level, significantly faster decision loop, and of course, increased range for our weapons. With that in mind, we need a new technical high-tech high -tech, state-of-the-art solution, like the AESA radar, like the upgraded electronic warfare systems, like the IR search and track, and so forth. And these feature features will increase the operational capability and partly compensate for the lower number of Gripens in the future. And that is what we will get with the Gripen Echo. However, I would also like to stress the need of accessibility for each platform in the future. With less numbers of aircraft, we need to increase the flight hours from each aircraft. And I also would like to stress the need of a balanced overall balanced air defense for our nation. Grip and Echo will be the backbone of that air defense, but we also need all the other assets to make the air defense effective. And I have extremely high expectations of the Grip and Echo. Today is the day for celebration of a spectacular outcome from an impressive evolution from the early days of Gripen. So, finally, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude, appreciation, and admiration to the Saab Group, making this happen on time and with the mindset of making the aircraft affordable for the Swedish Air Force. And you will give us, in the Swedish Air Force, one of the most important tools to remain relevant 
as an Air Force in the future. Really well done, and you've done it once again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helgeson. The evolution of Saab and Gripen is all about collaboration and partnerships across borders and countries and contributing to continue to make a global footprint and bringing partners to the Gripen family. The partnership with Brazil with a placed order of 36 Gripen NG for next generation, i.e. Gripen E, is a game changer and part of the Gripen technology transfer program. With a growing customer base, and with Sweden and Brazil, orders now in place, this is, like Mats mentioned, a strong backbone in the Gripen system, giving confidence to additional customers to join the Gripen family. And speaking of the Gripen family, and also a Gripen customer, I now have the pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Brigadeiro Nivaldo Luiz Rosato, commander of Brazil Air Force. Mr. Rosato will speak in his native language, i.e. Portuguese, but his speech will be translated live here on stage by his interpreter, Estela Corbellini. So please give a warm welcome to Mr. Rosato. Mr. Wallenberg, ministers, eh, ambassadors, commanders, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon for all. I will speak in Portuguese, but eh, you won't have problem because I have Stella. <laughs> we were born in the same state in south of Brazil, and she will be uh, my translator. Ao estender os meus cumprimentos a todas as autoridades presentes e já nominadas, inicio minhas palavras apresentando os sinceros agradecimentos ao Grupo Saab, na figura do Sr. Marcos Wallenberg e o Sr. Rocambuski, pelo distinto convite direcionado ao Comando da Aeronáutica. Aproveito o ensejo para saudar toda a equipe de desenvolvimento do projeto Gripen NG. Senhoras e senhores, na data de hoje, o Brasil e a Suécia assinalam uma importante página de suas histórias. Neste momento, gostaria de externar os meus cumprimentos ao Major-General Mats Helgeson, pela fidalguia dispensada à minha pessoa e pela objetividade no trato dos assuntos de interesse comum, em nome do qual congratulo todos os integrantes da Força Aérea Sueca e todos os irmãos das nações estrangeiras aqui presentes, além das autoridades citadas. As tratativas bilaterais e a sinergia dos empreendedores, desenvolvimento, desenvolvedores e visionários brasileiros e suecos estão transformando os anseios de seus países em projetos vencedores. Dessa forma, apresento minhas sinceras congratulações aos grupos empresariais 
que tornaram possível a materialização do projeto Gripping NG. Essas empresas souberam atender aos requisitos de nossos países e se uniram em torno do Grip NG, um equipamento inovador de tecnologia de ponta, tido como uma, um verdadeiro divisor de águas na indústria da defesa brasileira, considerada estratégica para o país. Reforço que a proposta apresentada pela Suécia no processo seletivo chamado FX2 foi aquela que melhor consubstanciou a intenção primordial da Força Aérea Brasileira. Buscamos não apenas absorver tecnologia, mas sermos parceiros no desenvolvimento. Assim, a qualificação de recursos humanos altamente especializados, acompanhada pelo processo de transferência de conhecimentos, proporcionará um novo impulso ao desenvolvimento de nosso complexo científico-tecnológico, o que julgo ser um dos mais importantes legados deixados por este projeto promissor. Highly skilled human resources, together with structured knowledge transfer process, will leverage the development of our scientific and technological hub, which I believe is one of the greatest legacies of this promising project. O GRIP NG oferecerá características inéditas, com índices de desempenho que certamente podem fazer deste avião um protagonista na defesa de qualquer nação nas próximas décadas. GRIP NG offers unique features with performance levels that can certainly respond to the defense needs of any nation in the coming decades. No nível estratégico nacional, o GRIP NG representará um fator preponderante para a dissuasão de qualquer ameaça à soberania do espaço aéreo. Cumprirá fundamentalmente ações de defesa aérea, mas re realizará ainda as atividades de reconhecimento aéreo e ataque à superfície, sempre centrados em um sistema de fusão de dados que proporcionará ao piloto um quadro preciso do cenário de emprego. A médio e longo prazo, constituirá a espinha dorsal da aviação de caça brasileira. At national strategic level, Grip and NG will represent a major advantage to face any threat to airspace sovereignty. The aircraft will be employed in air defense actions, but also engage in aerial reconnaissance activities and air-to-surface attacks, always based on da a data fusion system that provides the pilot with a precise picture of the work scenario. These fighters will be the backbone of the Brazilian combat aviation. Importante notar que a tecnologia do sistema Grip NG permite ainda harmonizar o nível de desenvolvimento de seus componentes, a simplicidade de operação. Assim, viabiliza a sua atuação em qualquer ponto dentro dos 8 milhões e 500 mil quilômetros quadrados do território brasileiro. It is important to mention that Grip NG system technology also aligns, allows to combine a great level of component development with ease of operation, thus enabling the aircraft 
to perform at any point within the 8,500,000 square kilometers of Brazilian territory. Sob esse escopo, reforço a importância estratégica do Grip NG, na medida em que possibilitará novas capacidades de emprego e de pronta resposta, o que, juntamente com a concepção da nova aeronave multifunção KC390, fortalecerá os alicerces necessários à garantia da soberania de nosso espaço aéreo. In that sense, I emphasize the strategic importance of Grip and NG, as it will enable new employment capabilities and prompt response, which, along with the design of new, the new multi-purpose aircraft, KC390, will strengthen the foundations necessary to guarantee the sovereignty of the Brazilian airspace. Isto posto, externo meu reconhecimento a todos os brasileiros desdobrados na Suécia que se dedicam ao sucesso deste projeto. That said, I express my appreciation to all Brazilians who are in Sweden working to the success of this project. Ao povo sueco, em especial aos integrantes da Saab, enfatizo a minha satisfação em tê-los como parceiros. To the Swedish people, especially to the members of Saab, I emphasize my pleasure to have you as partners. Ao encerrar minhas palavras, faço votos de que possamos nos manter no rumo do aprimoramento de nossas capacidades operacionais, suportado pela consolidação de parcerias e pelo desenvolvimento de nossos setores industriais e de tecnologia. I would like to conclude by saying that I hope we can keep improving our operational capabilities, consolidating partnerships, and developing our industries and technology. Com imensa alegria, dou as boas-vindas ao Grip NG, a Força Aérea Brasileira, avidamente o aguarda para ocupar o seu lugar de destaque na defesa de nossa soberania. It is with great joy that I welcome the Grip NG. The Brazilian Air Force is eager to see Gripen take a prominent position in the defense of our sovereignty. Thank you for our attention. Thank you and obrigada, Mr. Rosato. I would now like to welcome up on stage again Ulf Nilsson, Head of Aeronautics, as he will take us through and talk more about the enhanced features and details on Grip and E. So please give a warm welcome to Ulf Nilsson. Thank you. Gripen has been in service for more than 15 years and with almost 250,000 flight hours. Gripen is the result of more than 75 years of design and development. Gripen has a balanced design with continuous upgrades to be able to have operational, meet to meet operational requirements. Predicting the future is impossible, but with Gripen you can adapt and shift focus when needed. This approach with a perfect balance between capabilities, technology, solutions, cost efficiency, and close customer participation is already proven. The last E version is an evolution of the Gripen system. Based on the Gripen DNA unique and a unique balance design, Gripen E is developed with the operational objective to counter and defeat the most advanced future threats in a, in a very complex environment. Before we go into any details, I would like to start with addressing the question, why does the world need a new fighter? Affordable power, the need for a fighter with a balanced design that breaks the cost curve. Air power is not only about the performance of the aircraft. It's also important to be able to have an affordable solution to operate a significant number of aircraft that is true air power. 
an impact that goes far beyond the armed forces. When Gripen, you get something more. It's always been part of Saab's strategy to have industrial cooperation. And we don't see it as a threat. We see it as an opportunity to create growth and partnership and transfer knowledge. And we can provide many different solutions to suit our customers. In Brazil, for example, we provide the capability for production, development, and testing of fighter aircraft to build a complete capability for the future. Rapid technical development and improvements. A fighter's operational life is for 30 to 40 years. And that is why we use stepwise development and not MLUs. This gives operators a fighter that is updated and ready for action. New operational environments, the need for a fighter that is more powerful and capable. So now let's look into some specific features of Gripen E. More power. The Gripen E has an increased range and to achieve that we have increased internal fuel. And this means that we can reach the targets stay there, perform our missions, and have few left to go back home safely to the base. We can also carry greater payloads. And this will enhance the air-to-air -air capability. And we can also carry a wide range of weapons. And with the open architecture of Gripen, it's easy to integrate weapons. And this is why Gripen was chosen for the test program of the Meteor. And now it's becoming the first aircraft that's going to be operational with Meteor. And all this to carry this more weight of fuel and external loads, we of course need a more powerful engine because the engine is the sole power source for the airplane. Also to generate more cooling and more electricity for other general systems in the airplane. Another big leap forward when really is the new avionics system, and that's a major technology development for us. And this means we increase the computer power so we can calculate and also have a sense of fusion where we can present relevant information to the pilots in real time. But Daniela is going to dig into that a bit more later on, so I will save the rest for that. More capable. We have a completely new sensor suite on the Gripen E. A new ASR radar, IRST, a passive sensor, and a world-class electronic warfare system, which means that every aircraft has the capability to survive and defend itself with jamming. And this will boost the situational awareness of the airplane. We have a number of active and passive sensors, and this will create a sense of fusion so we'll have the knowledge what's going on around the aircraft. And of course, all of this has to be presented in a good way to the pilot, so the pilot can make the right decisions on a mission. We also have an upgraded communication system with new radios, new cryptos, new data links, and so on, to be able to have that in a good way. And now to summarize, more Gripen, Completely new sensor suite, a true multi-role swing roll aircraft, easy to service and maintain in an affordable way, always combat ready. So with that said, my conclusion is the world needs a new fighter, and the answer is Gripen E. Thank you. Thank you, Ulf. Thank you for sharing you. more details about Gripen E, enabling us to get more information about its features and c capabilities. Let's stand in the light a bit. Um, you've done a tremendous work with this masterpiece, I must say, and you've done it with a team of people. And I know that before we do the actual unveiling, we'll meet two of these team members. Yes. Could you tell us a bit about them? Yes, it, it's, it's a true team effort. That's a lot of people have uh, put... Uh, a lot of time and effort to be able to have this unveiling here today. And I know Daniela and Matti is going to show some of our thoughts behind the smart thinking and the evolution of Gripen. 
So I'm looking forward to see what they will present to us. Thank you very much. Thank Ulf. you. And with that, I'd like, ladies first, I'd like to give a warm welcome to Daniela Ivanic, System Engineer Avionics Platform Software at Saab, who will talk more about smart development. So please give a warm welcome to Daniela. It is the inside that counts. I know, it's a cliche, but hopefully by the time I'm done in about 10 minutes, we'll all agree that there's more to it than just a hashtag on Twitter. Let me do some time traveling to get some perspective. Do you remember mid-80s? What do you remember concerning technology in our everyday lives from mid-80s? My first computer experience was with an Amiga and Space Invaders. We used to watch movies about rich Californians driving their suitcase-sized mobile phones in their convertible cars on those fat TVs with convex screens. Well, not everything was better before. Meanwhile, here in Linköping, Sweden, Gripen, one of the most advanced flying systems was being born and it was smart from the very beginning. The Gripen system was taking form that will begin to survive all the technological challenges for over 30 years. And we do not only survive, we are continuously pushing the limit for what is considered possible for a fighter jet. For years now, we have been leading on market with short turnaround times and low cost of maintenance. We have challenged the fighter jet industry by developing Gripen's own ground support system. We offer everything from training simulators to maintenance analysis. And to my knowledge, we are still the only manufacturers that deliver the complete system. And once again, by the power of innovation, we are breaking ground for what is considered possible in the world of avionics. At mid-80s, a mobile phone was not part of every person's life. We probably saw them most on TVs. Let's do a 10-year time jump. Mid-90s, more affordable and also more mobile phones. In those days, key meaning of innovative technology was to make components smaller. In the following 10-year period, almost everybody had a mobile phone that could fit their normal-sized pocket. But how much during this time did the inside of the product grow in value to the user? Not enough, as it would become clear to us. Some mobile phone manufacturers thought they were leading the charge when suddenly a revolutionary product emerged, a smartphone. You could add functionality without needing to invest into new hardware. A whole new world of possibilities emerged. If someone had told us about this world only a year in advance, we wouldn't believe them. This led to something really groundbreaking a user-friendly product that is prepared for the future and easy to adapt beyond the imagination of today. The same design criteria we have devoted into Gripen-E. It is said that a company not moving with the pace of change is already dead. It just doesn't know it yet. A renowned professor from Chalmers University of Technology in Gothenburg, Sweden, has measured the pace of change and concluded that the complexity in embedded system grows 10 times every seven years. This tells us two things. In the future, complexity is the main enemy of development. Additionally, in, it implies that all companies will become software companies, as the CEO of Forrester Research said. We at Saab are taking this seriously. Gripen-E is not just an amazing performance machine. 
It carries more than just state-of-the-art sensors. Its heart contains an avionics system that was even hard to imagine 10 years ago. We have been challenging conventions of what is considered possible on avionics to deliver a platform that will allow us to keep pushing the limit. Platform that is on the edge of innovation. Platform designed to battle complexity. Designed for adaptability, for evolution. Gripney avionics system safely separates flight uh, critical functions from tactical features, allowing us to update faster at lower cost, providing us with new user value defined through software developed by us or our partners, you. We have made a configurable system that contains complexity in the platform. This means that we are making it possible to separate sensors and actuators to a very high point of independency. Independent from each other, but also the hardware they operate on. This also means that we are opening the doors for future needs that we yet cannot predict. Saab is becoming a definition of a world-class software company. By taking this step into the unknown, we need to use our imagination in not only our design of our product, but our leadership skills as well as development. By addressing that we are part of a complex domain, we need to understand and manage that every question might have several answers. We need to probe, sense and respond rather than follow old habits. A mental transformation like this is a huge challenge to the organization, to me and to my co-workers. But innovation is core of Saab. We are transforming the way we work. Not only our software development by processes we work by and our leadership need to learn and adapt how to, <coughs> sorry, how to act according to the new context we are putting ourselves into. All this change together is smart development. Today, you get to see a new aircraft but in front of that aircraft, you see me, an extremely proud engineer, proud to be part of Saab family, proud to be part of the journey, not only building a new aircraft, but redefining the development in itself. It is tough, but everything worthwhile is hard. To address it like a team sport, solving it together, sharing both failure and success, makes it fun. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle, and thank you also for showcasing that the insight does count. That is no longer a cliché. And with that, we go from development and transition into smart production. And I hereby would like to invite Matti Olsson, Head of Production Strategy at Saab. Welcome up on stage. Production, a continuous evolution. Production is part of our continuous evolution. To design, to industrialize, and to produce. They are all dependent on each other. A constant development process. A symbiotic marriage, enabled to survive alone. At Saab, we refer to this as capability. A capability of which we have developed over time and where we can see the results of here today. Gripen, the smart fighter. Capability is converted into technology, to methods and tools, but at Saab, always by means of individuals. 
all innovations and development starts with a conscious thought or the activity by an individual. As an example, we consider early on on how we could improve product quality, on how we can reduce production costs and increase customer satisfaction. A challenge that's made us step ahead. We developed and trained our operators. We introduced self-authority inspection. We transfer the responsibility to the operators for quality assurance to those who really carried out the works, the operators. What about the results? We have better product quality. We have reduced our production costs. We have prouder operators with greater responsibility. And most of all, most of all, we have increased customer satisfaction. We call this power to the people. By the way, did you know that a grip and assembler are authorized to assemble a complete aircraft on their own? We call that expertise, we call that trust, and we call that drive. And those are the core values of our company. Let me provide you another example. A few years ago, we stood back, ruminated and questioned ourselves. We had the most modern design tools. We had the innovative and intelligent engineers who come up with the most amazing designs into blueprints and production documents. We had operators with long experience and deep knowledge. They converted these blueprints into products in our workshops. Maintenance engineers then further developed those into technical publications for customers and aftermarkets. Time after time, we repeated the same thing across the whole value flow without adding any new value. For example, we have managed to produce more than 50,000 production documents, multitudes of instructions, manuals, and publications. If you add change management and configuration control and the complexity to meet the market's needs for new products at the right time with short lead times, it becomes a daunting prospect. But in no way we are alone. This is still the reality for many aviation industries in the world today. But we didn't want to be like anyone else. So we took a step ahead. Trailblazers. Is it possible to reuse in what we have created and continue to do so? Could we use the same models again, which include all the information? Could we increase compatibility? Could we reuse the number of tools? Could we even become paper-free? Could we streamline change management and shorten decision-making processes? Can we transfer the responsibility from designers to manufacturing engineers to actually decide where and when the hole shall be drilled so that the right people can focus on the right thing in the right part of the value stream? We build up a new entire chain from concept, design, industrialization, production, verification, to support. We are now creating model ones. We reuse them over and over again. Recycling. We develop new processes. Rules were given greater responsibility and authority, and we were prestigeless. Designers, manufacturing engineers, quality engineers, operators, manufact... <laughs> Sorry, planning and operators were a part of our development teams. And by that way to work, we could early in the design phase identify what to do, how to do it, to what time it will take, and at what cost. And at the same time, identifying risks, and thereby avoiding surprises. We call this MBD, model-based definition but we can also call it courage. By having the courage to be trailblazers in an increasing complex world, we are able to stand here today. 
by having the courage to trust in our technology, tools and methods, but most of all, most of all the people, the people who diligently work in our offices and workshops around the world. We have cultivated a unique capability. The aircraft you're going to see soon here, it is produced in our ordinary production lines without having to pass the one so obligatory prototype workshops. We have such great trust in our people, in our technology, that we have redefined all you used to know about learning curves. Just to give me some perspective, industry norms state that it takes 180 units for new products to be fully learned. That was not good enough for us. So we took a step ahead. We are trailblazers. We created a new learning curve. We created a new learning curve that says we are fully learned after 30 units. We call that courage, and we call that evolution. And we reduce direct hours with up to 50%. In many ways, selling aircraft is a challenge. It's a complex, and it consists of more than just a state-of-the-art fighter. We noticed within the aviation industry that there was a standard to offer production and built-to-print packages. But as important that is for customer to have a viable supplier, it is equal important for customer to search for a viable domestic industry. We have seen an abundance of industries out there becoming reliant on additional packages once the earlier one has ended and lacking their own ability to advance in the value chain. Could we provide our customers with more than just a state-of-the-art fighter? Could we in some way utilize all the knowledge and capabilities we have gained through the years in our company? By using our unique capability to create amazing products, could we even create an even greater value to the customer? Remember, trailblazers and pathfinders. We took a new step ahead again into a new dimension. We allow our customer to share in the expertise and capabilities our company possesses. We allow our customers to share in the take part in the system integration, into design, industrialization, and production. We grant our customer access to state-of-the-art specialists, processes, working procedures, methods, and tools. We call this Gripen Academy, and we create added value for all. The customer gains the expertise and knowledge and to grow and to develop a domestic industry. And we developed in the same way. Together we create a healthy common platform in which to grow and to develop. We call it courage. We call it innovation. And we call it evolution. And together we are a step ahead. Thank you. The saying that time flies quickly when you're having fun is a statement that actually is today because we've come to nearly the end and I want to start off by thanking all of our distinguished speakers and experts, all of you in the audience, our webcast viewers, media and press for enjoying and hopefully finding this day interesting and rewarding. I hope that you've all received a deeper insight on the next generation smart fighter as Gripen E that is a smart fighter that on this day marks another historical milestone for Saab and for the Gripen program and also for the Swedish industrial and aviation history. With Gripen E, Sweden continues to contribute to a more safer and secure place. Quoting Ulf Nilsson, today we are redefining air power for the 21st century and changing the way air forces will think and fly and fight 
for decades to come. We're doing this in the Saab way, on time, on budget, and right first time. Today is the start of a very exciting journey. And with that, distinguished guests, the time has come, finally, the moment for the grip and need to be unveiled, the momentum, the crescendo that we have been waiting for, the unveiling of the next generation of smart fighters, more powerful, more capable, more Gripen, and built on evolution and a key milestone in the evolution of Gripen. So, are you all ready? Let's roll. Give it away for Grip and E. We believe that the world is beautiful and constantly evolving. And evolution is in our DNA. We believe in sharing technology to build growth. We believe in shaping the future together. We believe that humans are explorers, always wanting to know more. And knowledge is power. We're here to give the world 75 years of our knowledge in aviation. More powerful, more capable, more Grindon. This is Griffin E. There we have it, 
he, she, her, him, him, the masterpiece. I'd like you all to be seated for about five minutes. We'll just have a quick photo session. If I could please ask uh, Marcus Wallenberg, Håkan Buske, Mr. Rosato, Mats Helgeson, and Peter Hulkvist, could you please come up on the stage for a photo session? I also like to invite Media and Press. You can now come down and uh, start photographing this little masterpiece. And of course, you and the audience, you can come forth once the photo session is cleared. I'd just like to give you some practical details while this is all happening. For those of you attending different dinners, tonight there are bus transports outside that will take you to your respective dinners or if you're taking a flight back please don't forget to take your belongings and also take a goodie bag upon um, your leaving and last but not least thank you so very much for participating and making this day an historical and unforgettable day thank you There it is, Richard Smith. There it is, Griffin E. Looks great. Shown for the very first time in a spectacular show with lots of facts and information on what capabilities Griffin E has. Richard Smith, now talking head of marketing and sales for Griffin, what capability are you most, I most <coughs> proud of? I think, I think we heard so much today about the Griffin E. It's uh, so much to take in, but when you look at the machine now, you can see that it looks so much like a, a Griffin CD, but on the inside there, it is, it's something else. It's something that is, is absolutely revolutionary today. I think, I think the one thing that really struck me today is the, the discussion we had about the, the avionics architecture. The fact that it is, is so revolutionary, and, the, the example we saw comparing a, a, a smartphone today to a, a telephone from 10, 15 years ago, I mean, it's a, it's a prime example of uh, how state-of-the-art this fighter actually is. And it's great to see, see it also, also with these uh, really advanced weapons that we can see there as well. Uh, we talked a little bit as well about electronic warfare and how advanced we are. We call it electronic stealth, e-stealth. I mean, this is a uh, revolutionary machine. Mm. So if you pick one thing, what is, what is it you would, uh, would talk about when you meet with someone and talk about Gripen? I would say how, uh, how technologically advanced it really is. I mean, it's hard to see it when you, when you see the aircraft like this, but it's what's inside that really counts. It's what's inside that will really make the difference in modern warfare. Yes. But it could be a bit uh, too early, but what happens next in the program? <coughs> now we've seen it, everybody's gathering yep. around looking at it now, but uh, next thing, what well, is that? Well, as we've now had the rollout, it will move from final assembly and move over in the late summer period to, to flight test, and then we'll start the, the flight operations. And this, the designation for this aircraft, for those who don't know, and you can maybe see it on the fin there, is 39-8. The next stages will have two more development aircraft as well, which are also going through the assembly stages. And when will we see it in the air? This one. All things going well. We hope to see this aircraft in the air during 2016. Good. That will be another interesting be day. Very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Richard Smith, thank you. for joining me this day. And thank you all our viewers around the world watching this uh, webcast and for being so interested in Gripen. It's been a pleasure to present uh, evolution to you. Gripen evolution, of course. Thank you and goodbye.
now welcome to go and view the aircraft. Ladies and gentlemen, you're now welcome to go and view the Gripen E.